Hello and welcome to Keys News with Lydia Horton and Connor McCann. Here's what's coming up on the programme today. Strike! Don't cross the picket line! Lecturers and students at dozens of universities are striking. This week over pay and pensions for staff, the strikes are being led by the University and College Union. Ralph Ragnick has spoken for the first time as the new Manchester United interim manager today, ahead of his first game at Old Trafford against Crystal Palace this Sunday. Can a vegan diet save the planet? The Northern Vegan Festival held last weekend aimed to raise awareness about adopting a plant-based diet and the benefits it can have on the environment. A local charity are running a Christmas appeal to help those in need during the festive season. University staff have been on strike for the past three days in a dispute over paying pensions. Greater Manchester's universities have today decided to join forces and protest at Oxford Road. Thomas Ridley spoke to a member of the University and College Union earlier today. Yes, the strikes have been going on over pay and pensions for the last three days after the University and College Union put a vote to its members and they voted to strike. There's a big march starting here today at the University of Manchester, which is involving staff from the University of Manchester, Manchester Metropolitan Union, University, University of Salford, and the Royal Northern College of Music. I am here with Helen Franks, who is the president of the UCU's Salford branch. So Helen, what is the aim of the strikes? Okay, we want to bring the employer, the group of employers across the country to the table to talk about our terms and conditions. Uh, Salford are uh, at the moment mandated to uh, take strike action over pension, but we've got four fights. We want to in, uh, we want a pay rise. We want quality and equity in pay. We want uh, and casualisation, a casualised contract. And is this something that you would look to do again if things don't get sorted? We hope that this will bring the employer to the table in this action. But if it doesn't, and, and that the HGC, our national uh, uh, group that make decisions, will be calling for strikes next year. We hope not. So, will this action be enough to improve pay and pensions? Following the COP26 summit, the UK has been inspired to focus more on the future of our planet, and saving our planet even extends to what we eat. Abby Titmus went to the Northern Vegan Festival to find out what a vegan diet can do to help save the planet. As World Vegan Month came to an end, the Northern Vegan Festival was held at Trafford Park. The event was a place for small businesses to sell products and for people to try new foods. With a focus on the environment, more and more people are now choosing veganism. Approximately 79 million people in the world are now vegan. It's absolutely huge veganism and it has been like that for the last couple of years. So a few years ago, if I told somebody I was vegan, they'd look at me like I was strange and they'd, they'd ask me why and they'd ask me what I ate and they'd just think like, what, why are you vegan? It's so strange. But now if I say to somebody I'm vegan, every person I say is either vegan or they know somebody that's vegan. So it's so, so, so much bigger nowadays. Groups such as Extinction Rebellion have been campaigning for action to be taken urgently for the future of the planet. There are many reasons that individuals are choosing to become vegan. I, d I think everybody needs to go vegan. I mean, for many reasons. My, I'm vegan because of my love of animals um, and the want of equality of different species. So that is one reason. But another huge reason is your health. You know, you only live one life, you want to live it to the best of your ability and if you can be more healthy, more fit more mobile by becoming vegan, then why not do that? And then thirdly, for the environment as well, there are so many environmental issues coming into the news at the moment and people are just becoming more educated about these issues and, and the fact that going vegan does really help the environment. Charities such as WWF are campaigning against climate change and the impact it could have on endangered animals. They are promoting smaller changes from individuals to reach an overall aim. Everything helps the environment and with everything it's never as straightforward as it looks. There's a counter argument to everything but certainly um, lifestyles, food, sustainable food sources all make a difference and it's just about building the big picture. 
Now for football, Manchester United interim manager Ralph Rangnick has been speaking to the press for the first time today. Our sports editor Leon Jones is here to tell us more about what has been going on. So Leon, what exactly was Ralph talking about today? Well, Rangnick's press conference was very interesting actually. He spoke about preparing the squad mentally and physically for Sunday's clash against Crystal Palace, as well as bringing more of a balance to the team on the whole. Also, he spoke that he had watched the previous games, but he hadn't had any contact with the squad in the lead up to them. What changes will Rangnick make to the squad ahead of Sunday? Well, the main thing he'll bring is his pressing style, which is a lot different to any of the styles they played under Carrick, Mourinho, Odigan, and Solskjaer. And as well, he's, he looks like he might bring in players such as Cavani, who will press more than maybe Ronaldo, maybe Sancho, maybe. Some people have suggested certain players like Ronaldo may struggle to adopt to the new style of play. Well, it's entirely possible. Uh, I mean, Ronaldo is 36 now. However, he is one of the greatest footballers of all time. And of course, last night he scored his 800 and 801st goal against Arsenal. But uh, Ralph Rangnick did say in his press conference today that he will adapt his style to include Ronaldo. And I mean, how could he not, really? Finally, did Rangnick mention whether United will be active in the winter transfer window? Well, he briefly said that Man United might make some signings. However, he wanted to focus on building a relationship with the squad that he has already at his disposal. Uh, but if Manchester United were to sign a player, it would look like they would go for a defensive midfielder, maybe to replace Paul Pogba. Perfect. Thanks, Leon. Coronavirus infection rates are continuing to drop in six out of the ten boroughs in Greater Manchester. Trafford still has the highest rates with over 433 cases per 100,000 people and Bolton is the borough with the lowest with 298.4 cases per 100,000. A series of dazzling light sculptures have arrived back at Salford Quays and Media City for the Light Waves Festival which starts today at 5pm. The highlight of the event is a giant floating model of the Earth measuring 10 metres in diameter and features high resolution NASA imagery. In a recent trial, both the Pfizer and Moderna COVID booster jabs were proven to give the best overall boost response out of seven different jabs. The AstraZeneca vaccine is now being scaled back and people who receive this vaccine will either get the Pfizer or Moderna booster jab. Now, do you play with toys or a tablet? Screen time for children is at its highest level ever and as Sophie Rum Rumsby reports, experts say it's having a detrimental effect on children's development and behaviour. Come on, you gotta win this. Yeah, I hope so. These days, it feels like screen time is all the time. We all enjoy watching TV and going on our phone, but should we allow children to? Many parents now monitor their child's screen time. The screens are limited because they forget how to behave normally, um, they forget how to communicate and, and I think it's just such an overwhelming stimulus playing on the tablet. The NHS says the average UK child now spends six hours a day on a screen. Teachers and parents have told me this causes a lot of behavioural issues but it's not put children off. When I come back from school I play outside and then I wake, when I get a bit bored I come inside and play on my tablet. It really annoys me when they take um, my tablet off me because I'm in the middle of the game and then I lose when I had a really high score. Multiple US studies have found a significant association between screen time use and expressive speech delay in children. We are noting the children are very behind and whether it's a bit of everything but I would imagine a little bit more screen time didn't help. We obviously have some children it isn't limited for and you can there's a vast difference again with like expressive language, um, imagination, creativity, like creative writing. How does it make you feel when they take it away? Sad. It makes you feel sad? It's so constant that when it is removed they can't function normally and it's actually much worse to have given them the tablet than it would be to have not given them the you. tablet in the first place because they could behave properly before and not, not very well after. If you're wondering how much is too much, there's stark advice from the American Academy of Pediatrics. The recommendation is one hour maximum for children over two. If they're younger, none at all. Sophie Rumsby, Keys News. 
Shopping lists and Christmas presents aren't the reality for everyone at this time of year. For those living below the poverty line, their Christmas celebrations will only go ahead with the help of charities such as Wood Street Mission, who run a Christmas appeal every year. Ali Richards reports. For over 150 years, Wood Street Mission have worked to deliver the miracle of Christmas to families across Greater Manchester struck by growing poverty rates. With one of the highest rates of child poverty, 35.5% of children under 16 are living in these conditions. And as of March 2020, over 180,000 children were living below the breadline. So last year, for instance, we distributed toys to over 4,000 children, which meant something around about 12,500 toys and gifts were distributed. Uh, to families that refer to us and it's about making Christmas a special time for all children. For a span of 18 days Wood Street Mission could see up to 80 families a day coming here to get their own children Christmas gifts. Um, it's not like a normal charity shop um, layout if you like, it's about making people relax so when they come in here they get booked in uh, once they've been booked in, they get uh, introduced to a personal shopper and that personal shopper will then take them round and help them choose their toys. But where do all these gifts come from? Well, nine-year-old Tegan Rose from Burnage is Santa's little helper this year. Thank you for last year because we all came together as a community. For the second year running, Tegan is gathering donations from her local community. But what inspired this generosity? I know how it feels to like wake up on Christmas morning with loads of presents in the living room and to open them and to feel like some people out there don't get Christmas presents. I feel like at least one day out of a year, some people should actually have a chance to spend time with the family and like play board games together. I was going through the Christmas catalogue of what I wanted. <laughs> so I asked my mum, is there people out there who don't get Christmas presents? And she said, yeah. So I asked her, is there a charity that helps that? And she said, I'll try and have a look. And then that morning we found Bush Street Mission. Poverty is a huge issue all year round, but hopefully projects like this can help lighten the load this Christmas. Ellie Richards, Keys News. So what is the perfect time to put up your Christmas decorations? We asked on Twitter what your opinions are. 64% of voters said that December the 1st is the perfect time, with only 14% opting for November. One person stated that putting decorations up before December is crazy. So Connor, have you put your Christmas decorations up? I haven't this year. I've been really late to the party, but um, I do hope to plan over the weekends to get my decorations up. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, I'm thinking the same. I think November is a bit early, to be honest, but, you know, the start of December, the winter's be weather's become wintry, you know, people are putting them up, there's Christmas trees in shops, I think it's a great time. Yeah. Speaking of which, have you been to the Manchester Christmas Market? I have. I've been to the markets twice now. It, it's really good, so um, I've bought stuff for decorations, I just haven't put them up yet, but there's so much stuff you can buy at the markets. What about you? Yeah, I'm the same. I haven't bought Christmas decorations, but the hot chocolate is, is next level. Yeah, have you had the malt wine yet? I haven't. Oh. Should I try it? Get the malt wine. It, yeah. it, it's brilliant. It's got to be good because the hot chocolate is extra good. Yeah, so. I'll have to try it out. Have you got any more Christmas plans? Well, I'm going home next week. So, um, yeah, like that, that, that's going to be the plan yeah. then, just to go home and spend time with the family. family and just yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Yeah. Christmas yeah. time is a great time to spend with family. Yeah. Very precious, very precious. So that's all from us at Keys News. The programme may be over, but you can keep up with us seven days a week on our social media at Keys News. Have a great rest of your day. We have been your hosts. Oh.